joining me. It would be great to know um, whether you are both teaching finance courses at the moment. Um, if you want to put that in the chat box, that'd be really helpful. Um, just to let you know, we're recording the webinar, so you will be sent um, a link to view the recording afterwards, just in case you want to catch up on anything you've seen. Um, so we are going to be talking about my lab finance. Um, we're going to consider some of the challenges that you might be facing and how MyLab Finance might help overcome some of those challenges. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat box, um, although I can't see those when we're live in MyLab Finance. Um, so it might be easier if you do have questions and um, we'll cover those at the end. But put them in the chat box as you think of them, if that makes sense. So, um, what is my lab? Um, that's probably the first thing to let you know. So, my lab is an online learning platform. Um, for my lab finance, it's available for courses in corporate finance, international business finance, and financial management. Um, and it provides extensive personalized learning content um, that can be used for online assessments um, and for your students to be able to learn and practice. Um, and study at home, obviously, as we're all learning and studying remotely at the moment, having um, a wealth of online content is quite useful uh, for students. Um, there are th sort of three different ways you can use it. So you could use MyLab Finance before you run um, a virtual lecture, for example. So you could get students to practice, do some work in My Finance, uh, MyLab Finance, um, either reading the e-text, um, if you sort of assign them specific chapters um, or working through some kind of <clears throat> introductory problems. Um, we'll talk about learning catalytics. This is our classroom response system, which is integrated into my lab. So it all fits together. Um, you may have used things like um, what you call clickers in your kind of real classroom at certain points. Um, but actually, the, uh, our classroom response system learning catalytics is fully online and it's um, uh, it's kind of used by students, whatever device they have. They don't need a special device. They just need something that they can get on the Internet with. Um, great question, um, which I will address now. So how is my lab different from mastering? Um, so my lab is for kind of any subjects that are not science and engineering. So mastering is specifically for the science subjects um, so that covers biology chemistry physics um, and engineering and one computer science course so my lab is then for all of the other subject areas that you could think of from finance and accounting through maths um, to management marketing uh, psychology education um, writing <laughs> pretty much everything else that isn't science <laughs> i hope that answers your question um, so yeah, so you can use Learning Catalytics, the classroom response system that's built into my lab um, during your classes. So that might be something you could um, look to do in a virtual um, setting. So um, we'll look at that. And then the most typical way that people use my lab is to set homework after class. Um, and also at, um, often lecturers are considering using it for um, summative assessment, so maybe a midterm class test, or even obviously in the situation we're in right now, um, people are considering doing their final exams um, with my lab. So ultimately, for you, it provides you with a course management system. So it's a, a whole load of kind of content that's assignable um, and a way of you to track um, tracking student engagement and students understanding of topics. So it's a way for you to manage your course online. You can also add um, content to it. So it can be treated a little bit like your VLE, but it can also integrate with VLEs. Um, and then for students, they're getting an online homework tutorial and assessment system, which um, you know a lot of the content is going to be curated by you, so they know what they should be studying and when. But there are some also features that they could just use um, of their own volition. So if they just want to do more studying, more practice, there's a wealth of material in my lab for them to be able to do that. So <clears throat> you'll come on um, when I get into my lab finance um, to see just how easy it is to use. So it's a really um, straightforward system. 
to be able to preview a whole load of um, exercises that you might want to set your students, pick the ones you want to assign, and then everything is automatically graded. So no hand marking, no paper-based assignments, um, everything's online and graded automatically. And for students, that means they're get, getting an effective and efficient way of learning. Um, obviously, the anytime learning scenario is we're all at home, um, but, but they can learn um, on any device um, and anywhere. Um, and during usual um, term time, uh, students report uh, liking being able to just use the MyLab um, features sort of wherever they are, whether they're on their phone or on their um, tablet or whether they're in the university library on a um, computer there or whether they're on their laptop at home. Um, it's really flexible and there are students who you know prefer that kind of more bite-sized learning approach and just being able to pick up and do a little bit then come back to it. There are of course many students who we talk to who say oh I only ever use it on my laptop at home when I'm doing my homework and I sit down and do it for two hours and that's it. Um, so it depends but it, it's that online digital um, feature which gives the students the flexibility to use it however they prefer. So let's look at some of the teaching challenges that you may be facing. Um, obviously we're all looking at how to manage distance learning at the moment. So with MyLab Finance you can assign regular online homework um, and assessments from thousands of tried and tested and quality assured problems. As I've mentioned it's all automatically graded um, and you'll get to see those grades. Um, the added benefit of the automatic grading is that students receive instant feedback so they don't have to wait until um, maybe you run like a problem class or you, you know, you actually mark and get their scripts back to them, you know, usually two to three, sometimes even four or five weeks after they've done their um, assessment. Um, there are also videos, help tools within the problems um, and interactive activities, which means students have access to learn and develop their understanding of key concepts, even whilst they're at home. Um, so engaging students, um, obviously kind of um, generally across um, the lecturers that we speak to, um, there seems to be a tendency for students um, attendance at university at lectures to be kind of reducing it's students are less inclined um, could be lots of reasons for that um, sometimes there's a lot of pressure on them to you know juggle kind of things like work family life and studying um, and actually they just don't have the the time <laughs> to be on campus every time when we expect them to be um, but one of the things that we have been able to show with um, using my lab and mastering is that you can engage students in something when you make it required. So when you give it a little bit of credit, enough credit to incentivize them um, that it's worth their time. And it really encourages them to learn um, throughout the course. So rather than leaving everything to the end, they're doing a little bit of learning each week, which is exactly how we know <laughs> they're going to do um, do best in terms of preparing and understanding the course content and being ready for that final exam. Um, learning catalytics, using it in live synchronous distance learning classes is a great way to engage your students. Um, so obviously with a virtual class, it's even harder to know whether your students are paying attention, understanding, um, you know, or you can't even see the blank faces. Um, you just you just don't know necessarily. Um, so with learning catalytics, just posing a couple of questions maybe one, one, you know, halfway through, one at the end, to just check, did they get it? Were they paying attention? Um, and actually students do report that um, lectures where learning catalytics is embedded and used kind of gives them an impetus to be there because um, they know it's going to be a little bit more interesting and interactive than a, a standard talk, um, talk style lecture might be. Um, and there are personalised um, self-study activities. They will come on, um, as I'll talk briefly about the study plan. So when students are in my lab finance, they have the opportunity to work through a study plan. And as they work through that, the study plan um, shows them what they've, they've mastered or what they need to do more work on. And it provides them with more and more practice in the areas where they're struggling. So they have a really great view, especially when they're about to um, do their revision for their exams 
on what they've mastered already, what they maybe just need to do a little bit of work on, um, or where they, the areas where they really need to spend a lot of time just doing lots more practice. And then because it's all online um, and digital, um, you may be being asked to provide um, data on you know, students' performance and progress. You know, you might be being asked to limit, um, sorry, increase the progression through your course. So how many students make, you know, make it through? How many students um, go on to do well in subsequent courses? So having access to performance analytics um, through the gradebook gives you the insight you need to make more informed decisions. So that might be um, to engage students um, who are particularly struggling, spotting students who are at risk of dropping out completely, being able to intervene, check in, you know, what's, what are they particularly struggling with? How can we help? Um, and then using learning catalytics in live online classes means you can find out what the class understands or what they need more support on mm -hmm. immediately. So rather than even having to wait till they've done the homework, um, you could address it there and then. So if they really didn't understand um, the, the thing that you've just covered, you could very quickly or consider doing it in the next lecture, but go back and um, recap, maybe re-explain it. Um, another feature of learning catalytics is that you're able to pair up students. So you could pair a student who got the right answer with a student who got the wrong answer and peer-to-peer -peer learning happens and the student who got the right answer is able to explain it in a, just a slightly different way than, than perhaps you might do as an instructor to their um, fellow students and then that fellow student gets it. Um, as you use MyLab Finance across a number of years or across different cohorts, you might start to see patterns. So what you should see is um, obviously students kind of consistently, they should do pretty well in your MyFinance Lab homework, um, assuming that you enable help features for them. So it's very much of a learning process rather than a very strict summative assessment process. But you should also... Um, what you might also find is that students struggle with different topics um, year on year. So that might reflect what they are or not covering in as much depth at high school level. So it's a really interesting um, way of being able to identify and maybe change and adapt your course. So maybe, you know, you used to do one lecture on the topic of stocks and shares, but you realise that actually you know, their, their level of understanding of that is much less than it used to be. So actually, could you add another half lecture um, to cover that topic or, you know, set a different st style of homework for them to um, understand it or set some additional reading? Um, it's a really interesting way of actually seeing, instead of just in an exam paper where you might not get to set questions on all of the topics you've covered, in your MyLab gradebook, you're going to see student performance across all of the topics that you set homework for. So um, just to give you an idea of the um, kinds of questions um, in MyLab Finance, this is just one of the um, courses. So it's the Tipman Financial Management um, Practice and Application. Um, and there are 56 questions just in this one chapter. I think it's a 20 chapter book. Um, so there are over 800 questions in total, but lots more if you consider the fact that the study plan um, can generate sort of similar problem types using algorithmic functions. So there are, there are thousands of questions available for students to um, work through in my lab finance, but obviously there are also subsets um, some of the problems are only assignable by instructors so to keep that kind of um, separation so if you do want to set summative assessment that that's available to you um, and in case you're you're thinking kind of oh, okay what kind of questions are these and um, they're very much not multiple choice there are a few multiple choice questions but actually they are much more wide ranging, ranging. So it might be short answers, numerical problem types. Um, students can also be required to complete parts of or complete full financial statements. And there are also, uh, sorry, come on to this. Um, so most of the exercises 
in my lab finance also come with that immediate specific feedback for students so because it's all being automatically graded as they work through um, they get to see immediately if they've answered correctly or incorrectly um, you can limit attempts at questions but more often than not um, instructors tend to allow two or three attempts at a question in a homework because the emphasis is on the students learning through practice um, and hopefully getting to the right answer. And my lab finance is designed to support them. So the first way it supports them is by providing them with specific feedback on why that answer was wrong. So it gives them a clue as to actually how could they work out that the answer to this question correctly. So the other um, help feature that they get um, in lots of the um, problems are help me solve this and view an example. So when they click on help me solve this, they'll get um, shown step by step the problem, the, the steps required to solve the problem. So it won't be the actual problem they're working through. It will be an example, but it will, it will show them um, kind of how to approach the question. And then the same um, with the view and example, um, it will show you the question fully solved um, so you can look at that and then go back to your own question that you're working on and hopefully have a much better um, idea of how to get started solving it. So unique to um, my lab finance um, oh, and my lab accounting are auto graded Excel projects. So obviously Excel is key. If you're going to have any kind of a career in accounting or finance, um, you'll be living in Excel or an equivalent. <laughs> um, so students are able to practice their finance skills in Microsoft Excel itself. So they basically download um, questions in Microsoft Excel and they work through those, input their answers and then upload their file and they get immediate feedback when they've uploaded their um, submitted Excel file so they can learn from their mistakes. So just one caveat, these are available with select titles, but I think most of the titles that um, are in use in the Middle East uh, for finance have these auto-graded Excel projects. So really good um, practical tool um, so that students aren't with, you know, they're not just learning the theory, they're really seeing how this all applies um, in the real world of finance. Um, and financial reporting. Um, one of the interactive um, features, sort of learning tools available in my lab finance are um, video guided examples. So as students, um, if they're kind of working through the study plan and they want a little bit of extra help um, on a topic, they can seek out um, the video guided example for that um, part of the chapter. And it might just be a really, um, good way of them getting a recap on something you might have gone through in a lecture um, but just kind of that little snapshot just that one problem type that they're struggling with so um, let's look at my lab finance Okay, so this is um, my my lab finance course. So what I want to show you first is just how to how to assign content. So I'm going to create a homework. So you give it your name, and this is where you select your content. So I'm actually going to go to chapter three. I want to be able to show you um, the range of question types. So we've got a number of problems here, which if you hover over them, they're Excel projects. So that's going to be quite a, um, probably a question that will take students a little bit of time to work through. So they've got to download all the instructions and things like that. Um, these ones are income statements, so it's the kind of question where students have got to fill in, um, work out numerical problem, um, work out the answers and then fill in boxes um, in the uh, question. And there are also some 
questions, which are I'm not finding. There are also some graphical questions. Which I'll find eventually. So not every chapter has them because it depends on the um, uh, problem type. But this one has uh, multiple parts and requires students to graph their answers. So you can preview the problem. Or work the problem as a student. And so there are different parts to this question. So again, just, just to show you, um, I guess, the, the complexity of the questions that students are working through. So they're very much not um, quick, snappy, multiple choice. Um, they are more complex. You would expect students to spend quite a lot of time uh, on this type of question. So if I pick some content, I'm going to set them one of these Excel problems. And then a couple of the alg algorithmic. So different students will get different actual numerical values in the question. And one of those graphing questions. So this is now my problem set that I'm assigning to my students. I can adjust the points value. So I think that was going to take them uh, a bit more effort, as is that one. Make it out of 10 at ease. Um, and then I simply set my, my due date. So it's going to be available from now, and I'm going to make it due next week, um, just before midnight. So at the very end of next Tuesday. So um, I'm not going to allow students to work um, and change their score after the due date, but I am going to allow, allow partial credit on questions with multiple parts. Um, I don't have any prerequisites. I'm going to limit the number of times students can work each question to three. So once they've tried three times, if they got the wrong, wrong answer, they have to move on and they just get that one as incorrect. Um, I can allow students to see the full work solution when they go back to review the assignment after they've submitted it. Um, and I'm going to leave all of the different learning aids in because this is a homework assignment and I want students to uh, work, work through it and learn um, and practice. And that's it, save and assign. Now, if I wanted to create a test, which is slightly more... Um, so if I want to do a midterm, I can make sure I pick algorithmic questions. And add those. Um, you see the option, it's slightly hidden here now, but the option to pull questions. So when you're creating something which is a bit more of a summative um, class test, you have the option to obviously pick algorithmic questions, which means that each individual student will get a slightly different version of this question. But you can also create pools. So students are, are given a test which picks from five pools of 10 questions, for example. So everyone, every student gets five questions, but it will all be mixed up and no two students, or well, very few two students, would have exactly the same set of questions. And because they're al algorithmic, it's very, very unlikely that they, that they would have exactly the same numerical values to work through in those questions. Um, I'm not going to go through with the setting of the due date, but just to show you, um, again, you can limit the number of attempts, but this has additional features, which is that um, you can allow students to save the save for later and come back. But what's more likely is that you want to set a um, time required for students to complete the test in. And so you want to... Um, 
students to complete the test in one session and you may make it so that if they if their attempt is interrupted they cannot resume an incomplete attempt until you've enabled access to it and the test time allowed is 60 minutes and I can show the time remaining during the test for the students and I'm also going to scramble the question order for each student so again that's a further way of you know if students are um, sat together if you're putting them in a, a room not right now you wouldn't be but if you were putting them in the same room um, you could actually have students sat next to each other but they wouldn't be taking the same test um, and the students can review their tests and they can view feedback while they're reviewing and the, it uses the results they get to update their study plan so if they do really well in a lot of topics on this midterm it'll reflect in the study plan so again when they come back to revise for their final exam in your course they know what they were pretty good on in the, the class test so they can focus on revising on the areas they know least well and so um, I'm not I haven't set the dates but that was just to show you the features of assigning a test style um, assessment rather than a homework So um, we talked about learning, oh, sorry, I wanted to show you an Excel question <laughs> to just show you what those Excel questions look like. Um, so this comes with additional information and um, instructions for students. And there are also features in My Lab Finance where you can set students um, questions which explain to them how the Excel graded projects work. So you could do that in your first week so they become familiar with how these questions work. But essentially, um, students have got to um basically change the numbers in here these are not uh the correct um formulas or numbers so students would work through these following um these requirements so in, in cells d15 and e15 they need to work out these two things and they get a point for each and so on so they work through this filling in all of these green boxes and then they save their file and they upload it into MyLab Finance where they start their, you know, when they're in that Excel question. So learning catalytics, um, similarly to MyLab Finance, again, if you've used um, electronic voting systems or clickers in the past, you may have found that they tend to have a limited number of question types. So with learning catalytics, um, it was actually designed by a lecturer at Harvard um, and he designed it to be as flexible as possible. It has 18 different style um, questions. So, for example, this one is a sketch question where students are being asked to graph the relationship between future values and time. And so your students, you know, you'd push this out to them and they would use um, their laptop or their tablet or their mobile to draw a line on this graph and they would um, you would then see all of their uh, their little graphs <laughs> appearing on your screen um, and you could instantly see kind of okay most people are getting this in the right direction you know their graph is going exponentially up or it's um, following a curve and then actually you could probably see the students that really didn't quite get it get it right um, and that could start a really interesting conversation um, this one is a confidence level um, question so today uh, so which you want to invest over a two-year horizon which of the following strategies can you adopt to achieve that goal so students um, these questions familiar our students with the lock in and rollover strategies I do not know anything about finance, <laughs> but hopefully your students who would be studying this topic would understand this question. <laughs> um, this one is an interesting one where you can use learning catalytics to gather some data um, to do a little bit of a discussion or some statistical analysis um, based on students' responses. So as you're working through a finance course, you might start asking to them, students about whether they're saving for retirement already um, and asking them to rate on a scale of one to five how likely they are to begin saving 
now that they've understand future value and the power of time. <laughs> so um, if they can, you can then put all of those um, question answers in and you'll see, I think you will see kind of a, a graph of how many people said one, two, three, or four, or five. And then that might start a discussion around, okay, so lots of people said, yeah, um, five, lots of people said one. How does that um, change your opinion? And all of the learning, um, so a number of learning classics questions um, are available. So there are already questions for finance, which is these ones I've shown you, um, available in learning catalytics. But it's also pretty easy to create your own questions. So if you were used to doing questions in some other electronic voting system, it's quite easy to add your own questions in. And it reports back to you um, a grade book. So when there are very clear right answers or whether you can show that a direction of a graph is correct and all students can match that graph and um, it, it will mark it as correct which I think is slightly different from um, clickers where you kind of hand those out to students and then they hand it back back in and at the end of the class and there's no way of tracking which students said which answers So the, um, the next thing I just wanted to show you is the gradebook. So all of that um, content that you're assigning and the students are working through um, populates a gradebook. So you'll be able to see across your course um, all of your students and all of the homework that you've set and any class tests you've set and you'll be able to see their performance. And then if you want to look at specific items, you can see um, for um, a specific question, how many students answered correctly or incorrectly, how long they spent on that question or that assignment and lots more. Um, and as you can see here, you can also look at each individual student's performance. So really useful if you do spot a student who looks like they're not doing quite so well in your homework that you're setting. You could just dig into that a bit deeper. Um, you can also email the student directly from your, um, where, when you're looking at their results. So an easy way of kind of saying, oh, I've noticed that you, know, you didn't do so well in this last week. Um, is there anything particularly you're struggling with? You know, do you want to book an office hour with me? Um, and then there's also a way of viewing um, the data within courses um, on a dashboard which gives you a really um, quick view of how um, students are going through uh, your course so these are all your assignments and um, you've got a really good average score here of 74 percent um, with yeah not that many students um, below 70 percent in your your course although this um, assignment looks to be a bit harder as did this one and um, so a really visual way of you being able to see, OK, students really get these three topics struggling with this one, struggling also with this one. Is there something I can do to address that? OK, does anyone have any questions? Um, OK, so um, Annie, I think you missed the, be the beginning of my session. Um, hopefully you, you caught up um, with where we got to. Um, so just to let you know, I, you will be sent a recording um, by email so you can catch up on the beginning. Um, and you, it's, it's possible at the moment, um, due to obviously our COVID-19 situation, to be able to access my lab um, for free for a, a short period on your course um, to support your teaching. So you'll get the um, how to do that in the email as well. And a Pearson sales representative will get in touch um, just to support you if you're interested in using MyLab Finance to 
um, support your teaching at this time. So you can also visit pearsonmylabandmastering.com if you want to just um, look up um, some of the features that we've been through today. And I hope that you will um, consider using MyLab um, to support re remote learning as it's kind of so crucial right now, but um, perhaps into the future when we get to back to some sort of normality, um, a really good blended learning tool for your campus-based courses as well. So if there aren't any questions, um, we'll leave it there. And uh, I hope that was useful and interesting. Um, and thanks very much for joining me. And um, yeah, stay safe. Thank you. Goodbye.